Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Tonight we're going to take a look at the completed QCX Mini. Now, the last time I left this on one of the Ask Daves, I had aligned the receiver using a real antenna rather than a dummy load, but had not done anything yet with the transmitter, which was only putting out one watt. So what I'm going to show you is some photographs of the process of, uh, well, first I'm going to realign the receiver with a dummy load like I'm supposed to. And then second, fix it so that it transmits more than the, the one watt. It's supposed to be five watts. And I'll show you what we get out of it. Let's take a look at the pictures. This picture shows the main board of the QCX radio. There are actually a couple of daughter boards that sit on top of this. One is the display board, the other is the controls board. The display board plugs into this uh, connector right over here and the display or the controls board plugs in right here. When you plug those in, these three screws and this capacitor are available for uh, setting the radio up. By the way, this is the little capacitor that has to be added because of a mistake that was made during production uh, for the capacitor on the other side of the board did not have enough voltage tolerance. So this one right here will handle 16 volts. Uh, this was supplied by QRP Labs and uh, was included in the kit along with the instructions. So what you do is you turn on the radio then you remove the main board, I'm sorry, remove the uh, display board and then remove the control board so that you can get at these three items right here. Now the radio will work, you can't hear anything because the volume control is off, but it will still transmit on the same frequency that it was left on uh, when you took the boards out. So you take the boards out after you turn the radio on and uh, get it uh, to where you want to get it. Okay, so this is the first setup here with uh, this power supply in the back. The radio is on receive and we've got the main board here. Here's the controls board right here and up over here is the display board. And uh, this right here is the cover for a ceramic screwdriver that I'm going to use to do the moving the uh, turns around and things like that because the ceramic will not affect the magnetic field. Note that in receive at 13.8 volts, it takes only 70 milliamps. That is not very much current at all. Now here it is, after I have adjusted the turns, here's the, screw, the ceramic screwdriver right here. You've got to remember not to use this as a regular screwdriver because it will break. These are about $5. But right there are the little boards. See these boards here, or these uh, coils right here, where you have to adjust. Notice on this one here, which I had pretty much bunched up originally, I had to completely spread out. This one I came close to spreading out. And this one right here, if I spread it out any, it would cause the power out to go down. So I kind of went back and forth between these three right here and uh, the system works fine. And as you can see um, right here, I got 5.23 watts out of it. Now this is a really stingy watt meter. Um, I think I actually probably got closer to six watts out. And then the next thing I did was to put all the boards back together and put it into the case and uh, put the final thing together. So this is what I've got. This is the, by the way, the reference key uh, for here. This plugs in here and then here are the headphones. These are my poor uh, Sony headphones that I've used for making videos for many years now and they're <laughs> I think about due to be replaced and then here is uh, 12 volts uh, about 13 volts from the lithium-ion battery that uh, you can see in this picture right here this bio -NO power is what I used when I moved it over to the desk for the test 
This is what displays on the panel when you first turn it on. It's a 5 watt CW transceiver and the firmware is version 1.07a which is current. QRP Labs 2020. Okay, well I built it in 2021 I guess. Um, but uh, it, it works just fine. The one thing I wish I had a choice on was uh, is whether to use a BNC or a PL259 uh, connector. This is a PL259 in an adapter. My entire station is PL259, so I have to use these adapters for all these little uh, QRP things that seem to love the uh, BNC connectors so much. So there it is. We started out adjusting these right here, and uh, so seven. Uh, 70 milliamps on receive, 0.63 on transmit, and I'm going to do just a little quick multiplication on that. That's uh, 8.7 watts. Now you may ask, how can you transmit 5 watts with 8.7 watts? And the answer is that it's got a Class E uh, transmitter. These, uh, there's a driver and then three finals right here and they're connected down to the board for cooling reasons and I put some computer uh, thermal transfer paste in there too. Uh, they operate Class E which means that they're extremely efficient uh, as an amplifier and that's something you can do uh, based on the uh, fact that it's CW. What happens is these put out a little pulse and this filter right here filters out all the harmonics in that, leaving behind, oddly enough, a sine wave. So what I ended up here was with my 5.23 watts uh, going into the dummy load. This is the Heathkit dummy load back here. And I'm very happy with the little device. I tried calling CQ today, but there wasn't much happening on 20 meters except a, a contest that was going on at a much higher rate of CW than I can manage. By the way, this does have a little CW decoder in here. And if it's listening to a code sent with a paddle, it does a pretty good job of uh, re receiving it as long as the signal is strong. By the way, there is no automatic gain control on this. So if you happen to tune across a nearby station that's putting out a lot of power, it'll about blow your ears out. So you've got to get ready to manually adjust the gain because there's nothing automatic to adjust the gain. But there it is. I'm very impressed. It's tiny. It's dinky. You can see how small it is compared to the headphones and the key, which is also quite dinky and uh, a delightful piece of equipment to have in the shack. And there we go. The QCX Mini now joins my collection of QRP rigs that I've got here. I do want to have some QSOs on it, and so we'll be trying that over the next few days. Uh, today is Saturday. I thought I could get something, but uh, there uh, was a contest going on. I'll try again tomorrow and see what I can do. So I'm very happy with the radio. It puts out more power than... Uh, it claims it puts out over 5 watts and uh, the receiver on it a lot of people complained about the receiver I don't know why because it's a very quiet receiver uh, you can hear down to the noise floor on the 20 meter band and I've picked up quite a few uh, weak signals on there as long as uh, along with some extremely strong ones that just about blew my head off but uh, there we have it if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel. I think you'll enjoy the other videos that I put together. I'm trying to do one a day. I'm getting about five a week. And we do a live stream every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. Uh, also, something else to take a look at where I answer questions sent to hamradioanswers at gmail.com. That's hamradioanswers at gmail.com. I wish I could get to every question. I can't, but we try and take a good sample of them and uh, answer them in that broadcast. Broadcast. Live stream. Live stream. It's a live stream. It's not a broadcast. A broadcast is television. This is YouTube. So, if you'd like to help support this channel financially, please go to dkastler.com support 
for various ways you can do that. And until we next meet, 73.